Hi, welcome to Chosen Crown, Women of the Bible, Chapter 3. Today we are reading about Leah. Before we get started, for those who are viewing, today's t-shirt is Hold On to Your Crown, Isaiah 62.3. I love our crown-inspired scriptures. Everything is from scripture, don't forget. Okay, so we're going to start with Leah today. So grab your book or listen up. Leah is the mother of Judah. Genesis 29. Meet Leah, who according to scripture is unwanted, rejected, and plain-looking. She had a younger sister, Rachel, who was said to be everything Leah was not. She was wanted, noticed, and beautiful. In this story, you will find hope in this surprising tale of love, trust, deceit, and watching Adonai work his plan to answer Leah's prayers. Genesis 29, 16-17 Now Laban had two daughters, the older daughter was named Leah, and the younger one was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eyes, but Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. With a beautiful younger sister who attracted all the boys' attention, Leah was often overlooked, left out, and set aside. Some can relate and imagine Leah crying buckets of tears and praying countless prayers for Adonai to have mercy on her and send her a loving, caring husband to marry and raise a family with. Leah had an important decision to make, give up on her prayers or hold on to hope that Adonai would answer them. Adonai heard her prayers and collected her many tears. Psalm 56, 8 he had planned all along for her to marry. It just wouldn't look like what she had imagined. Nevertheless, Adonai heard and answered her. This story is an excellent example of why we don't need to tell Adonai how to answer our prayers, but to trust he knows best since he can see the bigger picture. During Bible times, Customs required daughters be married off in order of birth. In this story, Isaac's son, Jacob, left his family to live with his mother's family for a period of time. When he arrived, he met and fell in love with one of his cousins right away. The apple of his eye was the younger of two sisters, Rachel. According to custom, since Rachel's older sister was still unmarried, Leah had to marry first. Even though Jacob was aware of the marriage customs, he was not interested in the details. He was laser focused on what he wanted and made a deal with her dad to acquire Rachel as his bride. In good faith, he trusted his future father-in-law to keep the bargain they agreed upon, regardless of the issue of Leah's current state of singleness. Jacob fulfilled his part of the bargain, and the much-anticipating wedding day arrived. Surprise, surprise, surprise! But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah! <laughs> What have you done to me, Jacob raged at Laban? I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, Laban replied. But wait until the bridal week is over, then we'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years, a week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. Laban gave Rachel a servant, Bilhah, to be her maid. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her much more than Leah. 
He then stayed and worked for Laban the additional seven years. That's in Genesis 29, 25 through 30. It must have been a very dark night with a lot of wine consumed because Jacob did not even realize he was in bed with someone other than his beloved. He woke up to none other than his beloved sister Leah. How could he not know it was a different woman? Weren't Leah and Rachel described as being very different? This mistaken identity sounds very much like the trick Jacob and his mother had recently played on his ill father pretending to be his brother to get the inheritance blessing. A great story in Genesis for you to read. It seems the same trick was now played on Jacob. Scripture doesn't say what Leah thought of her dad's deceptive plan. But one can imagine how delighted she must have been to finally be married, albeit dishonestly. Sadly for Leah, her joy was short-lived, as Jacob had made another bargain with her father and was then able to marry Rachel a week later. What must it have been like for Leah to compete with her beautiful sister for the love of the same husband, knowing he preferred Rachel? Not to worry, Adonai cares for his children. Let's see a great example of how Adonai cares for those whom the world rejects. This is Genesis 29, 31 through 35. When Adonai saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children, but Rachel could not conceive. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, saying, Adonai has noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon, for she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved and has given me another son. Then she became pregnant a third time and gave birth to another son. He was named Levi, for she said, Surely this time my husband will feel affection for me, since I have given him three sons. Once again, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to another son. She named him Judah, for she said, Now I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. When it seemed Laban, Leah, and Rachel's father was deceitful, Adonai used him to care for Leah and carry out his plan for her to marry and bear many children, one of which was Judah, who would at the appointed time become a great tribe for Adonai and the true ancestral line for Jesus. He used Leah for the ancestral line for Jesus, this unwanted, unnoticed plain girl was used by God. That's just so encouraging to me. This story should encourage anyone who feels neglected and unloved. However painful your life might be compared to others, remember Adonai loves you and is working a plan you cannot see. It will often look different than the plans you had hoped and prayed for, but his plan will be better than you could have ever imagined. Adonai created you for a special purpose. Trust him to care for you. Another lesson we learn in this story is that while Leah probably felt hopeless about ever finding love and starting a family, Adonai had planned all along to create her for such a time as this to be the mother of Judah, Adonai's beloved tribe. What a gift and a purpose. Adonai loved and cared for Leah. Colossians 3.12 As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with feelings of compassion and with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Deuteronomy 33.12 Adonai's beloved lives 
securely. He protects day after day. He lives between his shoulders. You know what that is? It is a hug. It is God's embrace. You live between his shoulders when you trust him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for seeing me even when the world sets me aside. Thank you for creating me in your image and seeing me as a beautiful woman with a special purpose for you. Thank you for showing me in your word how much you love me and say I am chosen, holy, and dearly loved. Thank you for caring for me and keeping me in your warm embrace. Thank you for healing my unbelief and teaching me to rest in your arms. Amen. For those who have the book, there are reflection questions. For those who don't have the book, pray about this and be thinking, what is something new that you learned from Leah's story today? Number two, what is a takeaway from Leah's story that you can apply to your life? Number three, describe or think how this story has given you new insight from the Holy Spirit. Until next time, God bless you.